Hi everyone, it's Al's Plumbing Tips again. Um, now a few of you have wrote to me uh, and said that they're having trouble uh, finding their drain valve to drain central heating down. Um, some of you want to just add some flushing agent and add some Furnox inhibitor, uh, but you can't find where to dry to find a drain valve to drain it down. Um, now for the uninitiated, this is what a drain valve looks like. Okay, this is the thing you're looking for. Okay, it should be on a pipe somewhere. Um, off a rad or it can even be part of a rad valve itself and it'll have a drain valve incorporated on it that's what it looks like okay now that's all good and well but sometimes you might find that a you haven't got a drain valve which is quite normal i'm afraid some plumbers have put heating systems in with no valve um, and also you may find the valve doesn't work um, it's all seized up and it won't drain a thing out the washer's stuck firmly on the seat um, or you can find the valves in a very inaccessible position. Um, so what are you going to do? Um, don't panic. <laughs> it's not as bad as you think. All right, now, um, first of all, just make sure your program is not going to turn on. Okay, make sure it's switched in the off position. Your boiler program up for central heating and hot water. Make sure it's off. Now, any of you that have got a combi boiler, um, you haven't got to turn any water off at all. Okay, I'm going to shut any water supply down. For those of you with a F and E tank system with a hot water tank, um, you have got to turn the water off. Now you can either a turn the main stopcock off uh, down the kitchen under the sink, which will shut all your house down, unfortunately. Um, or if you feel brave enough, you can go up in the loft and tie the ball valve up in the small F and E tank, in which case it will leave your water supply still on. Um, either is fine. So, okay, now that we've got your water off, um, what do we do? Okay, whether you're in a house or a bungalow, whatever, um, you've got to find a radiator that is at the lowest point in your house or your bungalow. Um, the lowest one, in fact, if it's a bungalow and it's all on level, and so maybe it's your house, maybe it's all level on the ground floor, there's no up and down bits, um, find the radiator closest to the front door, okay, or the back door. Um, so you haven't got far to run a hose outside. Next thing to do um, is locate that radiator and we'll have a look at it. Okay, so in my case, um, I've got this one here, which is closest for me. Uh, and there's one of my valves there, which is probably what you've got, a lock shield there. Uh, sorry, a, a thermostatic there and a, a lock shield on this end. Um, now, if you've got this type of union, which is a very small, thin one, you're in luck because um, it's quite a lot easier than on the wider ones. Again, on this side, on the thermostatic side, again, it's got a nice union that we can use. And I'll explain in a minute why that's the case, because I'm going to take you down and show you the next type of union that you can come up against on your radiator, which is not quite so easy, okay, which is this one here. Um, and this is the fatter type union. Now, the problem with this one is, is you, when you put your hose on it to drain this off shortly, you're just going to have to hold it. There's not much you can use unless you can get a union thread to go into a radiator and then put a female iron on that with a bit of copper. It's too complicated, but you can just hold those on because there's not much pressure. Okay, um, now I'm showing you the job on this one up here because I'm not going to drain it out. I'm just showing you how to do it um, because this isn't the lowest rad for me. It's that one I've just showed you down there. Um, but I'm just showing you that if, if you've got these type units, this is the easiest one to do. Um, so, I'm going to now show you what you've got to do. First of all, we turn the valve off. Turn the valve, the lock shield off, right off to zero. Or if it's an ordinary turn valve, turn it full off. The lock shield, again, turn it right off. Um, you usually got to take this off and turn it off with pliers. You see that there? Um, so we usually get a bit of pair of pliers on there and screw it right down. Uh, in my instance, I've got a little tiny spanner here that will do the job. And we just screw them right off. Okay, that's it. Now they're both off onto that radiator. So what to do next? A little container that we're going to put under there. Uh, because there will be a little bit watery, I'm afraid it's unavoidable. Um, so if you've got carpets of that, get plenty of old towels uh, and put it all around the pipework and that here because there will be unavoidably, I'm afraid, a little bit of water. We can't odds that. Okay, and the next thing on, uh, what do we do? We crack this nut here. Okay, now when you do this one, um, I'll put the camera down a second because what I need to show you is that you really need to... Um, hold against when you undo this union. I think we can see it there, yep, I've wedged it with a bit of, um, by that I mean hold a spanner against the valve there 
you put your other spanner on there because you don't want to twist this up like that because you could break that joint there. We don't want to break that one. We just want to break the one on the radiator. So use two spanners, this one to hold against and this one to pull. Okay, and just pull it up and it's cracked. Once it's cracked, you can let go of that one. Okay, because we've cracked the joint and we're now ready to undo our radiator. So we'll undo that now. Okay, there's not much going to come out at the moment because I haven't even broke the seal, but I've undone it, which just shows you there's not much pressure there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crack this little nut here. Okay, so there will be a little bit of water that's going to pour down there while I've cracked it, and I'm going to turn the valve around. So what I'm going to do in a second is I'm going to hold it again, crack that nut so that it's loose, and I'm going to turn the whole valve around. And then I'm going to show you what to do after that. Now, once you do that, water will start to come out of this end. Now what I always use, I mean it's up to you, but I use a wedge of plumbers mate because there's not much pressure there, um, just a ball of plumbers mate and I'm just going to whack that in the end because there's not a lot of weight so we can use that and get away with it um, or putty or anything like that but all you've got to make sure you do is when you reconnect it to take that putty out. Now the other way if you want to do it a longer way with no water involved and um, that will be to undo the bleed valve here. Okay, once you let air in, this rad will start to drain, and you can leave that there, and you can tip this into bowls of water until the rad is completely empty. When the rad's completely empty, um, there'll be no water there then anyway when you turn that round, uh, and it saves you the effort of obviously having to bother about plugging up this and everything else, because it will try to ludge out. But nothing will come out much until you undo the drain, the, um, the air cock at the top, okay? Once it's locked up, it kind of locks the radiator full, but you will still get some out when I turn this in a minute, which I'll show you. Um, now the other thing, what you can do ready, if you're ready for this one, now this is this is the king piece. If you can find a piece of copper tube like this and wedge it in the hose pipe, okay, with a nut and olive, this nut and olive is going to do up on the end of that radiator, okay. Uh, now if you've got an old bit or you can find someone who's got a bit of copper tube with a nut on olive like that you can now you can either buy a short bit of copper tube and a coupling and just use the nut and olive of the coupling okay like that and we're going to screw it up on that rad valve once it's on we can undo the radiator valve and drain all the water down this hose down it goes and outside once it starts to run then we can let it go till it stops and then go upstairs and open all the radiator valves, all the air cocks. Okay, make sure that they're all open and the air goes in and allows all the radiators to empty. Okay, so that, that's what we're going to do next. So what I'm going to do next, put a camera on the floor and um, take this piece around so you can see exactly what we do next. Okay, so I think my camera's on the valve now. Um, just wedge it up a bit so you can see it. Yep. Okay, so... We're now, I'm now going to show you this little piece, what we do now. First of all, hold the valve again. Okay, and we're going to crack this nut now. And this nut, we need cracking the opposite direction. So we can hold it there. And, oh, no, it's that way, actually. Get it right out. Get your spanner on there and pull it this way. All right, and then it's loosened it off. Now you can see the water starting to drip a bit. And we can pull this now around. You'll get that little tiny gush. Nip it back up again. Okay. Now you can see the red's trying to empty there now. Now you can, you can put your finger there if you want, if you don't want to put any plumber's mate in there, um, or you can stick now your plumber's mate in that hole, okay? And that will just stop it for now, just while you do the job. Get it out of the way, so it's kind of out of the way of the thing. Now don't forget, you've got to get that out of there when the job's finished. Okay, now next thing is to get your piece of copper like this, your piece of valve made up, and screw it into there. Okay, and all you've got to do is do the olive up, do the nut up like so, and turn the valve on. We literally now turn the valve on. Okay, I'm not going to turn it on for real because I'm just showing you how to do it. But just turn it on a couple of turns, okay, and the water will now run out and run out your front door and empty. It will take about 10, 20 minutes at least. While it's running, give it a good 10 minutes. When it tends to stop and you see it slowing down, go upstairs and open all the air cocks. Okay, all these air cocks, open them up on the end of your radiators until you hear the air go in and all the water's run out and finished. When it's all finished and there's nothing left, go back, turn all of those air cocks back off. Okay, when this is finished, you can take that back off because there'll be nothing left there then. Take your plug out and make sure there's nothing in there. 
Okay, don't leave anything inside there. Okay, then we can loosen this back off again. I know it's a bit of a wet mess while you do it, but if you have plenty of rags there, it won't be too bad. Okay, loosen it back off again and turn it back in to the valve like so. Once it's back in there, it will stop immediately because there won't be any, well, there won't be any water now because you'd have emptied it anyway, but I'm, I'm just showing, I haven't drained it because I'm not, I'm not draining it, I'm just showing you how to do it. But there won't be any water there when you do it, when it's all empty. Tighten it back up. Uh, you can put some boss white or a jointing compound around there and on this joint before you do it back up if you want to. Okay, do it back up. Now, another thing to do, um, if you haven't got uh, a drain valve, um, what might be an idea, once the system's empty, um, you see this radiator valve here, um, it might be a good idea to change this um, for a radiator valve that's got a drain valve on it. You can get them now with a drain valve on it so that in future um, you won't have to do all this, you can just drain it out. I know they don't look all that clever or that very nice, but if you change that valve once it's all empty for a drain off cock type um, in future, you can just empty it with a hose straight on there and that will save you doing it. Okay, now all you've got to do turn it back on okay turn the supply back on the other side as well turn them back on to what you normally have it on um, and shut all these bleed valves shut that one shut all the others if you've got an F&E go up in the loft if you tied the ball cock up and release it and start filling the system um, if you turn the main off obviously turn it back on and start filling the system now this is a long part of the job uh, it will take a little while to fill it all back up again um, and gradually go around all your radiators and bleed them all start downstairs and then work your way up um, the same thing now if you've got a combi boiler um, start to repressurize you all know i'm sure how to pressurize a boiler just turn your crack your valves on and watch that pressure gauge go up uh, get it up to about one one and a half bars shut it off and then go around your downstairs rads bleed them uh, the bar will drop down again as you use the as you use the water and fill the radiator as your pressure will drop when it drops down you've got no pressure coming out the air valves go back and repressurize your boiler again okay and let it fill the start of your top upstairs radiators again it will take the water it will the pressure will drop um you'll find there's hardly any air coming out the radiators when the pressures all dropped away go back to your combi repressurize to one and a half bar again uh, and keep doing it until all the rads are full at the end you should have your pressure gauge on your boiler should end up at one and a half bars okay um or one to, to 1.5 but usually one and a half bar then you're ready to go, uh, and it should be all set to go. Um, and that's it, really. Um, it's just, I've just sort of shown you on a system that's full. I don't want to drain mine out. <laughs> um, I didn't want to drain my bit. I just wanted to show you what you can do when you've got that situation. Okay, well, I hope that's all. Sure. Thanks very much for watching. Um, any queries, give me a note anyway. Um, just, just, just ask me the questions, whatever you like, uh, if you've got any problems with that. Uh, and that's it. Thanks very much for watching. All my videos, Derek and 33. Thanks again.